Svensson lining it up! Welcome to my journey. This week we're joined by Sanders FC midfielder Gustav Svensson. Gustav, you've had a, an incredibly colourful journey to this point to, to get you an MLS with Seattle Sanders. But I want to go back to the beginning. And if what I'm told is correct, football might not have been the journey you had have taken. You were also very good at another sport uh, as a young kid growing up. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I played a lot of sports when I grew up. Um, I come from a athletic family uh, where like sports and, and school was very important. Uh, so I did a couple of different uh, sports when I grew up. Um, uh, but the ma two major sports I did was soccer, football and uh, tennis. Um, and both, which I uh, pursued it uh, pretty, f pretty far, pretty long. And I played both um, both tennis and uh, football in um, in high school, um, and I didn't really know which way to go. Um, but it, you know, the 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 older I got, um, the easier it was to to choose a path and and uh, to pretty much let tennis go and 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 pursue my 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 career in football. I can't think of any famous Swedish tennis players, by the way. Edberg, maybe Bjorn. Nope. <laughs> Bjorn Borg. <laughs> yeah, that's we it, haven't it, had it, any in a while. That's, that, that's uh, interesting to see a long time ago. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, tennis was tennis was very very big when I grew up um, because of all those you know superstars yeah. we had back then. Um, but I, I felt like football was more of. It suited me much better. It was a a, a team sport. Uh, it was about you know um, physics. You know, had to you had to you know run as much as you can. You have to be uh, strategic and and uh, you could blow out all your engine in in football. In tennis, it was was more the best player won, um, the smartest player won, and uh, you know it, it fitted me much better. Um, and um, I mean, I, I can't say that I would be a tennis player. Uh, like I would have that as a professional, but uh, I was pretty good. I um, I was in in uh, national team, the youth national team, um, and um, uh -huh. or for uh, yeah for competing for it um, for for spots. Um, I think national team would be defined as. Better than pretty good, but uh, I, I like the modesty. And I was, I mean, I was, uh, yeah, I was top, uh, I can't remember, top 20, 20 something top, top in, in my age, um, in Sweden. Um, I, I was decent, I mean, I was, uh, I was pretty much the same as, a, as I am in, in football, I was, uh, just trying to trying to uh, make the other players bad, trying to make my opponents mad at me and, and destroy their game. <laughs> well, I wasn't probably I was the, the most beautiful player to watch, I think, in, in tennis. <laughs> as much as I, I, I like the idea of, of picturing you, you know, lifting Wimbledon for the second time uh, as a tennis player, <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to the, the footballing journey. And I, I think anybody who who um, grows up in Europe and, and talks about Swedish football, they talk about Gothenburg and, and, and the club and, and the institution that it became in terms of bringing great players through and, and performing in European competition as well. What was it like for, for you as a young player to join that club and what were some of the key experiences you took from that moving forward? Um, yeah, so when I was younger, I, I played for a team called Azalea uh, with my father as a coach. Um, you know, you, you like any other kid, you just play it for fun. Um, obviously, you play to win all the games. You you practice to become better, but not really pursuing any goals of becoming a, a professional football player. Um, it was more about having fun. Um, but then me and my family, we moved about down to 
to France for uh, for almost a year, and I played for a team called Rocheville, and I became a lot better. And and you know, teams started to recognize me a little bit. Uh, so when I moved back to Sweden, I I decided to to join IFK Gothenburg, which is um, one of the biggest teams in Sweden, um, and have uh, have a very long history of of you know uh, good good performance in Europe um, and uh, you know then you play with with other kids or other youth who have you know bigger goals than yourself probably in the beginning but you you match their goals you you match their their enthusiasm enthusiasm you know to to become better to show yourself to promote yourself um, and uh, I mean, I was lucky that I had coaches that always liked me, that liked the way I played, liked the way I did, you know, work 110% every training, always tried to do my best in every, you know, aspect of, of training. Um, and I've, I've always been lucky that I've had those kind of coaches um, that suited me and my, my, the way I play. Um, you say I'm not the way you play. I mean... When we talk about other European countries, particularly the likes of Spain, you say they have an identity, or Italy, defensive-minded, you know. Did you feel growing up Sweden had an identity as a footballing nation? or And if it did, what was that identity? Yeah, I mean, it was always the team before yourself. It's, it's, a, it's always been like that. It, it has changed a little bit, uh, I feel, the last couple of years. But when I grew up in Sweden, it was always, you know, help the team, help your teammates, uh, make your teammates better, uh, make sure that the team wins, not you. Um, you know, do 110%, like make sure if we're, if we're going to lose, make sure that you run until you puke uh, before, you, before you lose, you know, never give up. That kind of mentality um, where, uh, you know, fitness has been more, probably more important than technique um, that you do you don't really care about how you win the games but it's more important that you win the games or not losing games um, which uh, which like uh, fitted me really well then or and it still does it, it, it's made me a, a player and, and a person who hates to lose uh, it's, it's the worst feeling I know um, so I've I've always been you know willing to do everything I possibly can to to make sure that that ha doesn't happen. Well, you, you hate to lose, but looking at your career, you love to travel because you have success. Yeah. You, you break through with Gothenburg in the first team, and then you decide to to go to Turkey. And I think anybody again who's watched the Turkish league, they know about how passionate the fans are there. What what football really means to them. What was that experience for like uh, like for you arriving there and, and playing in that country? Yeah, I mean, that was a very, very big difference. Uh, I mean, Sweden, football in Sweden is big. Uh, but I wouldn't say that they're that fanatic. You know, you can you can walk around in the city and people won't bother you or, you know, they they let you be by yourself. But in Turkey, it's, it's <laughs> you can't go anywhere and, and, and get unnoticed. You, you walk into a restaurant and... and the chef comes out and say, and their owner says, uh, you know, your money's not good here. You eat for free and, and take whatever you want, pretty much. Um, and I mean, it's different, but as long as you win games, it, it's it's nice. It's <laughs> they really, you know, they thrive of, of, of football. I mean, the city t shuts down when it's a game. Um, it's it's all about you know the team in the city. It's all about winning games. It's all about rivalry. Um, but I mean, I I we did good when I played there. It was it was a good it was a good experience for me. How intense! You just mentioned it's all about rivalry, and again we've seen you know the the, the goats, the the blood, you know the fans on the way to the stadium. How, how intense is it to be a part of one of those occasions as a player in Turkey? <laughs> Um, I mean, when I came there, I, I've I haven't really had those kind of experience before. I mean, 
derbies in, in, in Sweden are are pretty massive. You know, there's a, it's IFK Gothenburg against IK Stockholm, which is not a derby, but it's a it's a one of the bigger games. Uh, it's a big rivalry. Uh, you can always you know feel the attention in the city when that game is is, is happening. But it's it's nothing compared to how how it was in Turkey. Um, you know, the the like I said, the whole city shuts down when we come with a bus to the game before the game. Um, you know, there's thousands and thousands of people outside the stadium waiting, you know, to to cheer you, um, to welcome you to the stadium. Uh, there was a couple of games where we, you know, we had our meetings in our in our facilities, and then we we're going onto the bus, uh, had, having a police escort to the stadium, and then on the way, they tell us that the game is cancelled because of all all what's happening around the stadium with the fans and everything because of you know fights and stupid things. But a couple of games were suspended when we're going to the game because of all the craziness that's happening. I, I, I can't even imagine, but you know, obviously that time is, is, uh, was the next step in your journey. But again, another kind of left field move from Turkey, uh, Ukraine had started to become an up and coming league in terms of owners investing in their clubs. Uh, how did that come about? What made that the right move for you uh, in your next career? <clears throat> I, I mean, I've never thought that I would play in Ukraine. I've never thought that I would lived there for two years. Um, I traveled around in, in Ukraine seeing a lot of teams. Um, and um, I don't know why, I, I can't remember how I ended up like watching a lot of teams there, like trying to figure out if this was the right move for me. But I kind of like the way that they organize their, their, um, their football. I kind of like the way that they have their mentality of, of playing um never give up you know and always always sacrifice yourself for the team um and like you said a lot of investments making the the, the sport bigger making the league better and 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 it was really good actually um a lot of good players um so it, it was a it was a different move you know turkey is is well known well known teams and well known you know good good football Ukraine wasn't, but I, I would say that Ukraine football was then, I can't say now, but was then better than Turkey football. Now, I, I know you had a spell back in, in Sweden, but then another, another travel opportunity presents itself. And again, we talked about investment in, in Ukraine, maybe even tenfold that investment in, in China in terms of what they were trying to do with the league. Um, how enticing was it initially or, or how easy was it to to kind of get you to, to make <clears throat> what were your first impressions um, of that country? I mean, it, it's, 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 I can't say that it was an easy choice because China is, is known uh, in, in the football world uh, for not being one of the greatest leagues in the world. Um, there's a lot, especially in media, about people are, who moves there. It's only about money. Um, it destroys everyone's careers. Um, and it, it might be true in a way, but it wasn't really that way for me. Um, what, what, struggled, what I was struggling with was that I, I gained my um, national team spot again. Uh, I've, I've managed to, to get a foot in, in my national team. Um, we just qualified for, for Euros. Um, and I played games uh, in the playoff against Denmark. For qualifying, uh, so I had I had a, you know I was in national team, but then uh, I got this phone call that a, a Chinese club, you know, wants wants to invest in me, um, and it's not just you know it's not that that easy. To, so you say yes, I'm in, even though you want to, like you, everything, you know, makes sense to go there <laughs> except that it might be difficult to, to have a national team spot and play in China because of mostly because of how media, you know, describes the Chinese league and, and describes all the players who, who, who decides to go there. Uh, but yeah, I, I signed anyway. 
and I lost my spot in national team. Um, so that was, you know, that might be something that I'm, I'm, I'm going to look back and say uh, maybe that was a wrong decision or maybe it wasn't. It's, it's, it's hard to say. Um, but I was, you know, I was really flattered that they wanted to have me. Um, mostly the international plays in, in China are, uh, you know, forwards or, or people who score goals or, or you know, uh, big time names. Uh, but they wanted me like an unknown uh, defensive center mid um, who, uh, you know, who's strategic or, or most of his game is to destroy <laughs> the opponent's game. Um, <laughs> So I was very flattered that they that they like handpicked me, um, and and um, that was one of the the biggest reasons why I really wanted to go there because I know that that's not many players like me who has who will have the opportunity to go to China and play. Now from China, all of a sudden we, we get you to where you are now in terms of of MLS uh, and to uh, to Seattle. How did it come about? And um, you know, when you first heard about it, um, what sparked your interest? What made it the right move for you? Um, I mean, I have to thank uh, Freeberg a lot. Um, he was here. He, he, uh, he was probably the biggest reason why I'm here right now. Um, we have the same agent, uh, which made it easy for, for, you know, my agent to contact Sounders or, um, to say that I'm available. Um, so it wasn't really Seattle scouting me. It was more my agent, you know, reaching out saying, you know, Svensson's, uh, Svensson's available. Because my second year in China, they decided to change the rules uh, from five foreigners to three. Um, and then we had too many foreigners and, and uh, we had three guys scoring 20 plus goals, you know. So I was the obvious, you know, choice to to cut. <laughs> um, so there I was sitting in China, and 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 my agent called uh, Carl. He uh, he called me and he said, uh, uh, "I can get you to MLS if you want. You know, uh, probably can get you to Seattle Sounders." Um, and you know, I've, the first thing I did was to call Freeberg and, and ask him how it was, and and. Uh, what he thought about you know me moving there, and um, he had only great things to say, and and um, I pretty much just went with what he told me. Um, so it was uh, it was a big move because it's a it's a very long travel. It's uh, you used to that at this stage. <laughs> yeah, it's it's you know it's. I was probably thinking about going back to Europe, but. But MLS has always, you know, interested me. I've always said that I wanted to play at least a year or two in MLS to see how the American lifestyle is. Um, you know, this is my fourth year here, and and uh, we really like it. So I'm I'm really happy that we made we made that decision. Um, I'm really happy that Freeberg helped me a lot, and and um, that my agent had you know connections with Saunders. Now, I, I, we're going to get back to just the, the, to, to end with the Sounders in a moment, but you mentioned a, a couple of moments ago your international career when you went to China. You lost your, your place. When you came to the Sounders, uh, you were back in, the, in the, the Sweden setup, and I happened to be there on, on one incredible night uh, in Milan at the, the San Siro. What, what was that like for you, first, to be brought back in, and second, to knock out a team that many felt could win the World Cup? and, and yeah, <laughs> your own ticket to go to watch it. What was that experience? <clears throat> you know, it's it's a uh, it's a great feeling. It's it's you know, especially when you thought that 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 side of my career it's it's over. You know, my national team days are over. Um, I'm happy that I've played some, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, Sweden has a lot of great players. I'm, I'm I wasn't really you know sad or anything that I was not there anymore. Um, but yeah, it's it's a great feeling, and and when he he called me and and I got called up, it was you know it's it, it's a it's a great feeling. 
uh, and knowing that even though it's a it's a long travel, even though it's nine hours time difference, and and you know the first days there, I, I have no idea what they're saying in the meetings because I'm pretty much sleeping in in the meetings. Uh, we'll cut that part. But, out so he doesn't see that. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I, I've told him. Um. <laughs> uh, but uh you know it's a, it's a great feeling to represent your country and and uh and we've been doing so great since since um since Janne the coach took over uh and um like you said we had a very difficult game in in Italy in the playoffs to go to world cup um and this was before before that, we had a, a group with uh, with a lot of good teams as well, um, and we became second before Netherlands. Um, and then we had uh, Italy in the playoffs, which everyone thought, uh, even us, like this is going to be sure. hopefully not embarrassing. Uh, hopefully, we can get away with this without being embarrassed, without you know them scoring eight goals on us. Um, but we six like we luckily not not luckily, but we we won one zero at home, and then we had uh, the the away game one week later, and you know they were so calm. Italy, they thought you know they have this Sweden. We just have to score two goals, and you know we're in the World Cup. Um, and I started on the bench. Uh, you know, watching from the bench is, is horrible. It's 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 horrible. It's the worst feeling in the world because you can't really help. Uh, but then just a couple of minutes in, one of our center mids uh, gets gets uh, injured, and I have to sub in. And there's so many things that got gets in my head that I just don't f- this up, please. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, don't f- this up. Um, but yeah, it's you know, it's uh, it's like I said before. We we are in Sweden. We we help each other. We run for each other. We we fight for each other. We do everything we can for each other. And uh, that mentality made us, you know, draw in Italy zero zero and qualify for World Cup, which was um, one of the greatest you know feelings ever. Um, in my career, That's just to qualify for a player to, to to be involved at that world stage at, at the World Cup. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, just to qualify to it because no one thought that we would. You know, we had no one thinking that we would win that game, win that game again against Italy. Um, and you know, qualifying for World Cup is is one thing, but doing it in that way that we did it, it's it's uh, yeah, it's. It's um, yeah, one one of the the greatest moments in my in my career. The the final question for me is: it, it's been an incredible journey up until this point. What do you want for the future for Gustav Svensson? Do you do you see yourself becoming a coach, staying? In, I mean, w- what are some of your goals moving forward uh, in in the sport? Um, no, I don't. I don't think I can be a coach. I don't. I don't think I want to be involved in in football anymore. Actually. Um, you know, I've, I've I've only had this job. I've only worked as a football player. I've always had this this lifestyle, and you know, it's it's. I'm not saying that I'm looking forward to have like a Monday to Friday job, but but you know, have a job where you can you can you can decide when you want to have vacation. You can decide, you know. <laughs> After a Friday, you go home. You know you have Saturday, Sunday off, so you can you can you can meet your friends and have a beer. You know the lifestyle that I have is that we probably play every Saturday or sometimes Wednesdays, and and you can't decide when you can travel. You can't decide when when you have vacation. You can't decide what to do. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to you know take a step out of that lifestyle to to join the real world <laughs> um but i mean hopefully that is a long way to go um even though i'm 33 
I feel I feel much younger. I feel I feel I feel. I mean, I don't feel a lot different from from when I was 25. Um, so hopefully, I have five or so more years to play. Um, and you know where where I would end up, end up. I don't know. Probably have to play all the continents in the world to be the first <laughs> player in the world to play all the continents. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Look, ho hopefully we're back soon. But thank you. Um, yeah, you I, get hope, I hope we are. I hope uh, people are staying safe at home. I hope uh, everything gets back to normal pretty soon. Because I, I miss my normal life. I miss I miss playing football again. I miss my teammates and. Uh, I even miss my coaches. I have never thought I would say that, but it's, it's yeah. <laughs> we'll see if that's still the case after two or three days. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Just have appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day and, and love to the okay, thing. Thanks,